Good evening and welcome to the Catamount Football Show. My name is Ron Ward and I'm going to be your guest host this evening. I'm here with Coach Land and we're going to be covering all kinds of stuff related to Catamount football. We're going to be talking about last week's game versus Cass. We're going to be talking about this upcoming game uh, with Ridgeland uh, this coming Friday night. We're going to meet some coaches. We're going to meet some players and we're going to have Coach Land uh, recap uh, both uh, last Friday night and uh, give us some predictions on this coming Friday night. So stay tuned as we uh, continue with the show. Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of AAA Transformers Transmission and Complete Auto Repair. This is my son, CJ. You all know us for remanufacturing your transmission. But did you also know we are a brake, AC, and tune-up specialist? Our brakes come with a lifetime warranty on pads and shoes. So don't just trust your vehicle to anyone. Come to AAA Transformers Transmission and Complete Auto Repair. Where we can make it stop, we can make it go, we can make it shift, and we can make it cold. Check us out on our website at AAATransformers.com. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. Again, I'm Ron Ward. I'm your guest host this evening, and I'm here with Coach Land. Coach, uh, Friday night, uh, you guys went down to Cass for a big game, uh, mm -hmm. region game. Yep. Um, opportunity to level the, the record. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about Friday night. Tell us uh, what you brought away from that ball game. Well, first was that we played a very good football team. Yeah. Uh, Cass is, is definitely probably one of the most athletic teams uh, that is in the, uh, the our, our region. Uh, they're 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 obviously a a to me one of the best offensive lines we might play until the playoffs. Very seasoned. Hmm. Um, when you look at the quarterback position, uh, you were talking about a position that last year a young man just basically gashed us. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not there this year. They had a freshman. And I know that there was a lot of people that probably thought, well, that will be a point of weakness. I think they saw right off the bat. Uh, it's a pretty special young freshman, yeah. six foot three, 190 pounds. Uh, I'd like to have a few freshmen yeah. like that. That would yeah. be nice. Uh, but, you know, just overall, just a very, very good football team, uh, very well coached. Got a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Casco and their staff. Uh, they've got a great offensive coordinator down there, a young guy that uh, our staff's familiar with, just a, a really neat guy. And then I think also you saw – Beautiful campus, yeah. uh, and and maybe the largest stadium uh, that that is around this area, at least right. in Northwest Georgia. But you know, it's just specifically speaking about the game. Um, you know, I, I was very very pleased with how well our kids played. Uh, if you looked at every play in and out as our coaches have, not one play did we have anybody not giving their best. And you know, that's a great place to start coaching from. Right, uh, is that you've got guys that's giving their best effort. Secondly, you know, we did some things athletically I was very, very pleased with, uh, but we still had some execution things, and I'm just, we're, we still got to keep working on which is signs of a young team, right. and we, we knew that going in. So, you know, we got to get those things polished up as we now get into our sub-region play. Right. It's going to be very important for that. Uh, penalties came back. We've, we've been less than all of our opponents with the penalties, uh, but uh, we, we had quite a few more offsides penalties than, than we normally uh, would be happy with. You know, you know you're going to get one or two maybe with a snap count, but we had three uh, that just really, really just stung at the wrong times. Right. And so, you know, once again, we're going to keep working on those. Uh, but, you know, just looking at the overall team effort, I was very pleased. Our coaches were very pleased and very pleased with the, the game plan that we had. It felt like as the night went through, our conditioning was what kind of proved out to be one of our stronger suits. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something uh, there just a few moments ago about the youth on our team. Yeah. Uh, you know, Catamount football's been around a long time. <laughs> long time. But uh, we have a bunch of young kids out there. Yeah, we do. What's that, what kind of challenge does that present to you as a coach and to your staff? 
Well, you, you know, you've got to look at our young guys and you've got to understand or at least ask yourself what is their strengths. Okay. And, and, you know, one of the things that as a coach you want to do is you want to try to pick up where you left off the, the year prior. Mm -hmm. And you just can't do that when you've got young guys out there. All right. uh, one of the things that's kind of hampered us has been the injuries. That's been well documented. And so with that, you've got guys that stepped in to play one, two, three games that long term may not be your starters, but you're going to be needing them for depth right. down the road. So you've got to kind of juggle that as well. But I think looking out there and realizing that, you know, basically six of those 11 guys were playing either JV or freshman last year. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're in the middle of the game, and, you know, one of the coaches just basically made the comment and said, hey, you know, these guys have really progressed in these four weeks. Right. A couple of them really grown up. And so we're going to have to depend on those guys. And, you know, when you get to game four, nobody's inexperienced now. Everybody's right. played. Everybody started. There's no excuses going forward. So, you know, even though we're young, you know, now's when those expectations begin to rise because now all the games really matter sure uh, because now you're playing for seeding going into those, uh, into those playoffs here at the end of the, the playing game. Let me ask you this. Specifically, let's start with the offense. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to talk about offense. Oh, yeah. yeah of course, yes. we know defense wins games. That's but, exactly right. Okay, but we'll start with the offense. Offense sells tickets, they uh, say. There you so go. There we right. go. Yeah. All right, so what kind of growth have you seen – on the offensive side of the ball from well, game I, one to now? That's a great question. And I think where it starts with us is in our offensive line. You know, okay. we, we had two seniors returning in Dakota Tankersley and Jake Roberts, but and, and Juan Pacheco, I'm sorry, three. But we really, those other positions were, were, were just completely unsuited. And, and to see those guys, and, and I think one of the things that people don't understand about particularly that position, that may be one of the positions that has the most mass communication of all the positions on the field. Mm -hmm. You know, a quarterback gets a play and he may look out there and he checks this receiver and he may even turn around and tell the, uh, you know, the, the, the running back, hey, whatever his check might be or an audible might be. But those offensive linemen, they're really running the game. Mm -hmm. Because if, that, if the front is different than what they're looking at, if it's, if it's not what they're comfortable with, they may audible out of it, even audible the quarterback out of it. Hmm. So, you know, there's, that's the first thing has been in that. I think secondly, though, is obviously the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd be remiss to not say we, we lost a, a great warrior yeah. uh, this, this week in our game for at least, you know, for a little while, and we'll see how quick he can come back. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jace has played great for us and right. look forward to having him sophomore. back. Yeah, and he's a sophomore. That's exactly <laughs> right. He plays a lot of positions for us. Right. But, but, you know, at the quarterback position, I've seen a lot of growth out of that and felt going into this game would have been as comfortable one way or the other. Uh, we'd kind of settled into a little bit of a groove with, 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 well, you know, with one situation that we liked, but it could have gone either way, and now we're, we're, we know where we're heading now with, right. with Peyton. Uh, but then I think just also the wide receivers. I mean, we've got a freshman playing wide receiver, and outside of Peter Sigman, no one else in that group had caught a pass. And, and that's just kind of the, the, the you know, that, that to me. But I think the, the, the bright spot for, for me has been the tight end position with Chase Westphal. Um, you're talking about a guy that may be one of the best blockers that, that we've seen in a long time. And you'll see in the game film, he just plays outstanding. But he's also got great soft hands and he's a great athlete. So that, that, that to me, when I look across that, those are the areas that have really developed as we've kind of gone through these first four games and then, of course, the Daresville game. Okay. Um, Defense. Yeah. What have you seen happen on that side of growth? Well, wise? that's the old guys. <laughs> you know, okay. we've got nine seniors over there, but right. we but but we really only had five returning starters at that position. Two of our guys, even though they were starting in another position, have been moved to other positions. So, so they're we, learning we, new yeah, spots. they're learning new spots. But you know, defensively, I think the the I think where they've grown is the understanding that that you know in today's world. I don't want to say shutdowns impossible, but it's harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was playing, and a lot of people out there watching, you know, hey, you played, and you know, you only had to worry about thirty yards of the field. Right. Uh, but now the spread offenses all has kind of moved. Yeah, it's it's all over the place. Yeah. So with that being the case, I think how they've matured has been our old generals that have been on that defense and played in there. You know, uh, those guys have really kind of picked up the mantle of leadership. And I think some younger guys, I mean, we've got Jordan McKinney, who's a sophomore, that has stepped right in there. And you're asking him to play with Chris Childs, with Lyle Durham, with, you know, Edder Moore, with these guys that have been out there, you know, for 25 or 30 games. And you're suddenly now saying, you've got to play at the same level. Right. And so I, I think seeing that progression has been really, really good out of those guys and just how they've really blended and kind of understood that the first four games, they had to carry the team. And now until we can kind of get to midseason and, and this thing become a little bit more shared. Okay. Coach, thanks for that insight, Absolutely. and uh, we'll be back after these messages.
Wood, 299. Wood, 159. Sid. Mike Jones here, and you better bless the Carpet Express. We have three quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. It's now uh, time for us to have a visit with our uh, football players. I've got a couple of fine young men here to my right, so uh, I'll start over here on the end. You introduce yourself, would you, please, to the audience? I'm Jacob Bartu. I'm number 18. I'm a senior, and I play uh, fullback. I'm Hayden Gross. I'm number 55. I'm a junior, and I play left guard. Okay, Jacob, I'll start with you. How many years now have you been affiliated with Dalton High School football? Uh, I've been affiliated. Uh, I've been a, I was a manager for a really long time, but I've been playing uh, for four years. Okay. Hayden, how about you? How long have you been on the team? This is my third year and my second year of varsity. Okay. Uh, Jacob, let me ask you this. Um, this is a football-related question. Um, I've had the privilege of watching you grow up, and um, what's it been like for you to be a part of Catamount football? Oh, it's a, it's a dream come true. Uh, um, Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to play on Dalton High School football team, and like to actually be playing on it is really cool. Hayden, how about you? How long, even before coming to the high school, uh, were you involved with uh, Dalton High School football uh, at the middle school level? And yes, even, sir. Okay. Um, my brother came through Dalton High School, and I've been uh, in the Dalton public school system all my life. Okay. I was always coming to games as a kid and watching them play. So what's it like now that you're the one on the uniform, with the uniform on out there on the field? Um, I love every minute of it. I've always wanted to play, and now I'm actually getting to do it. Great. Well, listen, now let's talk about uh, this past Friday night. Uh, had Cass, uh, need, a, need a win, so. did, did great. Uh, Jacob, first of all, for you, what, what, do you take, what did you take away from Friday night's game that sticks with you the most right now, besides the victory? Um, just how, how hard we fought. and. Uh, it, when uh, offensively, when we answered both their scores, we answered with a, uh, I think an eight play, 75 yard drive or something right. for right after that um, reverse that they took in f uh, for a touchdown. Just how far, just how hard we fought and uh, we never gave up. Hayden, how about you? Well, Cass was a very physical team. They're very large, they've got speed, they've got talent. And um, I think we just gave it our all. We had a good game plan set for them. And uh, I'm proud of our effort and how we did. Okay. Um, this Friday night, we've got Ridgeland uh, defending state runner-up 4A. Um, you know that Mariakis always puts a good field a team on the field. Mm -hmm. What do you anticipate, Jacob? We'll start with you. What do you anticipate? Uh, have, what, how the game's going to go Friday night? What do you see happening? Well, they're they're a tough team, and uh, it's it's going to be a battle. I know uh, their defense; they're always they, they always have good linebackers. They always have good defensive linemen uh, that are going to fight hard, and um, it's not going to be easy. But it'll be good. How are you preparing yourself for Friday night? Um, mentally and physically. Mentally, I'm just uh, watching game film. Uh, making sure I know what to do, where, where I need to be on every single play, um, making sure I know the plays. And uh, physically, um, every day at practice, just making sure I give it my all so that I know uh, when, when Friday comes that I'll uh, have everything I need to succeed. Okay, Hayden, how about you? How are you getting, what do you anticipate from your position on the field and your role in the game? What are you anticipating from Ridgeland? Um, Ridgeland's got a big defensive line. They've got several returning starters. Um, they're going to try to hit us hard. I've been watching film on them, and we're just going to practice as hard as we can this week to get ready for them. Okay. Uh, Jake, let me ask you this question because you're a senior this year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's hard to believe. I, I know that your mom and your dad feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, how is this year different for you as a Catamount football player than previous years? Uh, I feel like as a senior you have more responsibility. Uh, you have more responsibility to step up and lead when the team needs leading. 
um, you have everybody kind of looks up to you more than when you're a junior or sophomore. You, you you're not at the you're not at the top. So I mean, right. it's it's just different with uh, the leadership uh, okay. standpoint. Okay. Well, listen, guys, our our time together is just about over with. I just want to wish you all the luck in the world uh, Friday night. Uh, stay healthy, play hard, and let's bring home a victory. Thanks. Okay. Good luck. And we'll be back after these messages. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology, so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time, so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs, all backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. And welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. And uh, again, I get the privilege of uh, talking with a couple of our Catamount football players, and I'll have them introduce themselves right now. Chris, we'll start with you. Uh, my name is Chris Childs. I've been a part of the Dalton High School program for four years now, and I'm a senior this year. Okay. Uh, I'm Devonta Davis. I've been here for four years and uh, play outside backer, 37. Okay. Chris, let me, let me ask you this, because uh, in, in my position at the high school, it, it's, it's, it's always a privilege for me to watch you guys grow up uh, from being little freshmen at the bottom of the food chain to now where you're seniors. What's the four years been like for you as part of this football team? Well, it's been tremendous. It's been a whole lot of hard work and uh, time given up to be able to do what the team wants to do and that's win the state championship and the region championship. So it's been a lot of time put into it, and we expect, expect a lot. Okay. Devontae, what, what's, it been, what's the journey been like for you for these four years? The journey's been uh, up and down for me. It's been fun, though, all the way, four years, football team, you know. We got our ups, we got our downs, you know, but we still go out there, we still fight, and we got region champs and state champs is what we, what we headed to. Okay, good. I like that. Uh, Chris, I'll go back to you now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the last Friday night's game with Cass. What um, what do you take away from that game that uh, sticks with you the most about that game? Um, what I take away from that game is that if we limit, if we would have limited our mistakes, like such as getting like penalties, like offsides and stuff like that, and holding penalties, then I feel like we could the score would have been different, but we would have still been on top and. Um, I've gotten some things from that, like I need to be a little bit more physical when dealing with receivers and uh, work on my form tackling and my coverage. Okay. And like calling out and recognizing plays to help out other teammates. Okay, I want to get back to that here in a minute. Devontae, how about you? What did you take uh, from Friday night's game? Well, Friday night was good. You know, Cass, they played hard, we played hard. Um, I believe that we did, like Chris said, we did mess up on the penalties for jumping off sides and uh, missing tackles. But all in all, it was a good game. Okay, I want to go back to something, Chris, you said about calling signals and that kind of stuff. That comes with being a leader. Um, as seniors, how is this year different from all the other years as a member of this football team? What, what, what's, it, what's it mean to you being a senior? What, how is it different this year? Well, to me, it means a lot because we've been in the program for four years, so we know like all the ropes. We know exactly what needs to be done and what we have to do in order to stay on top and continue to be on top. And it's big. The leadership role is big to me because I know once I leave, I want the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen that come later on. I want them to be great leaders also and 
learn from all the things I did do as a leader and gain more things and like just be a better leader than I was when I was here. Okay. Devontae, how about you? How is this year as, your, as a senior? How is this different from other years? I feel like we're on top, so we got to do as much as we can, the best we can, to show the younger ones a great leader and be a great follower. That way, when you get up there, you can do the same thing we did, but step it up a notch each year. We want each of the, the freshmen, the juniors, sophomores, we want all of them to look at us as great leaders, and we want them to be great followers for when we leave, they can step up in our place and do a better job than what we did. So what I hear you saying is not only do what I do, but do it better than I do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. What, what do you expect from Friday night's ball game? Well, Friday night, I expect for us to come out physical. I expect for us to come out and execute, have no mistakes, no penalties, and just redeem ourselves from last year and okay. make sure that we redeem ourselves in the right way. Devontae? Uh, I feel like we should come down here, like Chris said, redeem ourselves from last year, show them that we have stepped up, that we have learned from our mistakes, and show them that we're not backing down this year. Okay. Guys, listen, thank you so much. Wish you all the best uh, coming this coming Friday night and the rest of the season. And we'll be back in just a few moments after these messages. Wood! 299, Wood, 159, Sid, Mike Jones here, and you better blitz to Carpet Express. We have three quarter inch hardwood for 299 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. No, no problem with the deadline. Yeah, our internet service connection flies out that we have OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank Mike and Brian and IT for making all of this possible as well as Helen and personnel and my great OptiLink installer. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. I'm here now with one of our assistant coaches. Coach, if you would, introduce yourself to our audience and tell them what you coach. Yes, sir. My name is Scott Thompson. I'm a, the defensive back coach, and I'm the head strength coach. Uh, Scott, how long have you been with the uh, Catamounts? This is going on my 13th year. 13th year. Yes, sir. Uh, what are the various jobs that you've had uh, during your time with the Cats? What uh, positions have you coached? My first year, I was a tight ends coach, and then uh, I was there for a year, then I went to uh, receivers. Was there for about four or five years, and I went to help coach land with DBs. Then the following year, we needed a defensive end coach, and I coached defensive ends. And uh, since then, I've moved back to uh, defensive backs. Um, you've been working with the strength program now for for a few years now. Four years. Um, how have you seen that grow and develop over the over those four years? Well, it's a it, I believe it's a mindset with our kids. Uh, you know, we. They want to be here, they want to work, and uh, we're very dedicated in the weight room. I think it's what makes us a great, uh, great team. We uh, spend a lot of time uh, together, conditioning, getting stronger. Builds a lot of team unity, too. I see the boys in there working out together and spotting for each other. Oh, yes. It's, you know, we want our kids here at Dalton High School to work together. We don't want them to go to other places because they're working with their teammates. They're seeing their teammates work out and, and uh, get better and what they're going through. You know, our motto this year in the weight room is unshakable faith, unbreakable brotherhood, and leave a mark. Great. Well, I appreciate all you've done for our program over the years. Let's talk a little bit about some football now. Yes, sir. Uh, Friday night, uh, Cass High School. Uh, tell me uh, some of your observations from that ball game. Cass, very, very talented team, very talented team with a lot of athletes, very dangerous. Uh, most of the teams we face in our region are, are like that. Uh, they had uh, the capability of making a big play at any time. I think we stepped up and uh, played team defense and team offense and uh, came away with a very good win. Coach Miriakis, year in and out, year in and year out, uh, does a great job uh, with his teams. 
Uh, tell me some things that you are anticipating from this coming Friday night. Well, we know they're going to be a very well-coached team. They're very, very disciplined in what they do. They run the wing tee. Uh, they're going to run right at you. That's what that's what that's their forte. They're going to run right at you and pound you and uh, make you see if you, how fiscal you're going to be. If you're not going to be fiscal, they're going to keep running the ball. They may only throw the ball maybe uh, anywhere from six to nine times a game, but uh, they have athletes that can make go the distance at any time. We've got to play sound defense. What is it that you have to get your unit especially ready for? Well, our outside backers are very, very important this week uh, in setting the corner. Uh, we're trying to, we're trying to uh, clog up the middle with our defensive line and linebackers, flush it out to our outside backers, and let them make the play. My corners and safeties, and once again, it's, there's not going to be a lot of passing, so it's going to be a lot of support, uh, making sure that we come up, don't give up the big play when the guys are doing the job up front, playing, hitting, the, hitting every, uh, every down, and just, just helping every way we can. One of the things that I've noticed over the course of the season is the improvement that our team has had in the tackling. How much work do you have your guys doing uh, as the last line of defense uh, when it comes to tackling? We tackle every day. We tackle Monday. Monday we go to the ground. Tuesday we, go, we do a tackling circuit on Monday, Tuesday, taking them to the ground. And then on Tuesday we uh, go through a, uh, a fit drill, working on uh, proper form technique. But uh, we tackle on defense every day. It's the Dalton way. All right, uh, just one final thing. Uh, with the game coming up Friday night, um, what do you think is going to be the turning point in the game? The turning point in the game is going to be who, who is the most physical team. Who's the most physical team at the, at the point of contact? Make sure that we play as a unit, don't give up the big play, and make them drive the ball on us. Scott, listen, thanks for joining us this evening. I uh, appreciate all that you do, not only on the football field, but in the classroom and the thank weight you, room. Uh, you're a real asset to Dalton High School and Dalton High School football. So thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. And we'll be back in a few moments after these messages. When the diagnosis is cancer, you want the best. Advanced surgical, radiation, and chemotherapy treatment, all available under one roof, a center large enough to treat advanced or complex cases. A dedicated team of physicians, nurses, and therapists treating each patient the way they would want to be treated. It's all here at Hamilton Regional Cancer Institute. Hamilton Medical Center, your health is our mission. A restaurant should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable home-style cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest-growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. Honesty, integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. There's no place like Outback. With Call Ahead Seating, Nelson? just call up, get on the list, and you'll be seated in no time. Outback's Call Ahead Seating.
Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. Now in this segment of the show, we're going to take a look at highlights from last Friday night's game against Cass. Coach, uh, why don't you take us uh, into this uh, well, segment here? It starts at a beautiful stadium. Right. Uh, and, and, and obviously our, our young men were, I really felt prepared. We had a good, good day at school. Um, and uh, our administration was kind enough to let us out a couple minutes early. And you see a great block here by, by Westfall. As I taught, mentioned his name earlier, just one of the real bright spots of right. this of this uh, this season coming along. Jace started the game out for us, and you know you see kind of what Jace is. I mean, that's this is what makes Jace Jace. Uh, I mean, he's a guy that he's like a running back. And, right. You know, he gives you a little bit of a wildcat component to a conventional offense. Right. So uh, we're we're definitely going to miss that, but uh, look forward to getting him back here soon, and uh, we'll we'll just kind of see. Edder was another face that was new in there. Uh, you know, Edder has, has been uh, working through a few little nagging injuries, and we tried to give him about four or five games to kind of get his feet underneath him. Uh, we get a couple of first downs to start out, but then we have to punt. Uh, great job here of uh, just pursuing down our coverage, bringing down, and, uh, you know, like I said, getting down and, and making a tackle. Come back, and they run just a little zone uh, counter play on us, and, uh, they, they blocked it a couple of different ways. Jay Rockholt, mate, just had a great night. Jay Rockholt had thrown up literally for two straight days. Dakota mm -hmm. Tangersley, our center, had been sick, didn't eat anything the whole day, been throwing up. So we had some guys that were playing sick in this game, and both of them, I'm not going to say they played their best game, but they played good games, played good and games. That, that's what's important. Um, so you see this right here, you get a bad snap, and we got a great pursuit right there and some penetration with Devontae and, uh, uh, and Chase Todd and – you know, once again, you see those guys in there making plays. That's exciting. A lot Good of white job. Jerseys. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good job there. Getting pressure on it by Elijah Stidman, one of our seniors. Uh, but but a new starter for us. And you see him come in. He gets a good pop on him, and obviously he's not able to get the ball away free. So come in and they kick a field goal, and it's a thirty. I forget exactly what it is, but uh, very very good kick. And like I said, uh, um, so they go up three to nothing on us. Our offense comes out and. Uh, uh, Peyton throws just a little check down route to, uh, to Zeke off the pressure. We're not able to pick up a first down, so we're going to have to punt. Get a good snap from Grant Sane. Etter obviously gives us a great punt. Etter averaged 40.1 yards on, our, on the three punts the other night, so that was, a, uh, that was a good thing. So we finished the first quarter at, you know, at three to nothing. And, you know, you feel, <clears throat> once again, I, I was telling the quarterback club this, you know, you feel – like you don't, you didn't play a good game the whole game. You see, Devonte Davis nice. did a great job right there. Coach Carpenter, did an outstanding job all night long, calling our defenses and getting those guys in there at the right time. Uh, this is a team that ran the zone very, very effectively, and uh, had really played well coming into this game. You see right here a little sprint out by the quarterback, as I mentioned. Good pursuit. Great pursuit right here, and then just a nice. great finish tackle finish. by by Jordan McKinney. Of course, it's good to see those guys, you know, get some emotion. But you'll see this from the back side. You'll see Chipper uh, just doing a great job of flushing him out and just basically bringing him over to, uh, to well, Jordan. That's a textbook right there. It is, and that's like putting it on a silver platter. Oh, or something. yeah. So we get the ball back, and uh, right off the bat, we just run a little screen play to, uh, uh, to Kelvis, and uh, Kelvis goes about 70 yards, I think it is, 71 yards to score. Just a great – it's good to have him back. It's nice to have yeah, him back I mean, there, Yeah, it? it's like – yeah. Absolutely, it's like great to have him back. So you see, Big One. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you got those guys down the field making blocks. I mean, one just having him downfield, it's hard to get light around him. <laughs> so you know, having him downfield, uh, he's he's a real uh, he's a real asset. But, yeah, you know, get those guys. That's what you want. You want that excitement, and that's just that's just a great thing, man. That's that's what I love about high school football. Good kick, good snap, good hold, and uh, that's been very solid for us all year long. Come back and, and Pepe kicks oh. off, and once again a great job right there it's by Devonte. But we just we miss a few tackles yeah. here, arm tackling. Great job of Edder coming up, stripping him. He and Uriel, Uriel's playing very sound for us right now in our defensive line. Speed sweep, mishandled right there, and Chase Westfall's just right there. As Chase not only playing on offense yeah, side of the ball, having to help. Yeah, he's having to help us defensively. Just a great job of him being aware, even though he's being blocked away him being aware of that play right there. So just a great job of Chase being aware of the ball and getting it forced there. You know, turnover's been our thing right now. Right now we're plus four on the year. That's you know, great. Just, That's yeah, a great stat. We just got to continue that. But oh. that sets up that play, which is they have had some of our turnovers as well. And that guy blitzed literally right into it. Sure did. And just intercepted it. And just literally intercepted it. So, uh, uh, but anyhow, we get a good kick here to Tyler Nolan. 
Tyler's done a great job for us this year returning. Uh, and uh, just a great job here of him pushing the ball up, getting the ball up around the 30-yard line. He packs a little wall up. For, for he does, he does, absolutely. Size. Great job right here of nice Kelvis. Cut. Yeah, just great. Fi- you know, that's one thing that Kelvis has got. He's got great field vision. He sees the whole field when he runs. That's what the colleges like about him. Uh, you know, so it, it's just fun to see him play. Quarterback draw here with, with Jason. You know, that's just one of the things, like I said, he does well. He gets, he's a north and south runner. So right. when, he, you know, when he gets that ball, he's going north. Good job here of, of you know, Kelvis running. You know, he, he's, he's got so many different facets to his, mm-hmm. to his game whether it's a cut or it's a stop or, you know, but what you get gross here doing a great job of wrapping around his man's not there. So he turns up on that safety right there. Kels is so instinctual. I mean, he's just, you you can't coach that. You just just do that or you you can do that or you don't. Absolutely. And it's another great example right there of him using his body. But, you know, once again, you see gross down the field right there, picking up some key yardage right there. So come back and just run a toss sweep and Kels just puts his head down and, there's his, you know, that, that's, that's what I like about Kelvis. At the end of the day, he's able to put that head down of yeah. all the moves he's got. Boy, great ta- break block though there by Jacob Bartu. Yep. Uh, he and uh, really all those guys, but Jacob and, and Chase just do an outstanding job. So we go up now 13-9. to nine. Pepe gives us another great kickoff right here. I mean, literally boots it out of the end zone. <laughs> I love watching him kick. That's just one of the. That's one of got the, to be getting somebody's notice. Oh, it is. It is. No, no doubt. No doubt at all. No doubt at all. Here you see Edder. Another cost fumble by Edder, and uh, you know he's. Uh, I tell you, he, he's he's a pretty special guy, and uh, you'll see right here. He just comes in, puts his head on the ball, and right there is Jordan Keener, and Jordan picks up the trash. You kind of like that. So anyhow, that's a great, great way to get the ball back there. You get in midfield especially after you've scored. So now right. you not only have momentum, you've also got the score. Uh, I mean, then you've, you've also got the ball. So that's, that's, that's a good thing right there. So Jace comes back, gives us a good ball right down the middle of the field, back shoulder throw to Tyler. He realized that that defender was up on top of him. Right. And uh, he just comes in, and you'll see it right here. He just pulls him up a little bit short, protects him from the DB, lets him catch the ball. He's just about getting yards. I mean, that, that's ultimately what you want. Peyton came in, rallied up those guys. We run a little jet sweep right here. Oh, grass sniper shoots Kelvis uh, and, and gets him down. And uh, but he comes back and, and he's able to get the corner. Great job of Edward there kicking out. You know, once again, you'll see this right here. Look at our line though, Jake Roberts and, yeah. and those guys. It's amazing what those guys do. So just excited to see great execution right there on the goal line. The red zone is where you've got to score. Yeah. And uh, you know, you just got to have that. So. Once again, comes in, we get a good snap, good hold, good kick, and uh, go in at halftime up 20-9. to nine. Okay. So that's the end of the first half, and we'll be back after these messages with more uh, film on the second half. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. And now we're going to take a look at highlights from the second half of last Friday night's game versus Cass. So, Coach, let's get started with the kickoff starting the second half. Yeah, we lost the toss, and uh, so they, they chose to uh, defer to the second half and, and therefore took the ball. And so uh, we, uh, we wound up kicking off to them. And, uh, you know, they come back, and, and they, they, one of their adjustments at halftime was to become a little bit more wing T oriented mm-hmm. uh, and uh, get somewhat out of the spread. and. So they come back and run. A, we had a missed a miss coverage call here, and, and we had some guys out of position. 
And uh, this kid is another example of just a great athlete. A yeah. uh, small guy that got great speed. They get him the ball. He kind of hides behind some of those big guys. The next thing you know, he pops out the other end. So um, kick us off to Tyler Nolan. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do a little bit more ball you know, security drills. Guy Ooh. just strips him right there. And when he pulls it out, thankfully, we had a, a good pursuit there by Warner Braun. Warner is a young man that's contributing in a lot of ways to this football team right now. And, Bring back, and you got old Edder running just a straight dive on us right there. And, uh, you know, you'll just see he's just very patient. You know, Edder doesn't it. do anything fancy. He Nothing. Just, he just plays I'm telling just you, hard-nosed football. That's right. Both sides of the ball. Well, and you know what you're going to get. Great job right here. Look, great block nice there by block. Peter Sigmund and by Zeke Cobb right there. And look there, gross down the field. That is – that's textbook. That's exactly what you want. And, you know, we talked about that. What am I proud of? I'm proud of that. I think that's something if you look at – how we've evolved, nice we weren't blocking that down the field like that early game. Big Chris Hicks running down yep. the field. You know, that's that's what makes you a good football team, and that's what breaks the long runs. That's right. Once again, we come back to the well and, and, and just run an old pitch sweep out right there and uh, once again just get a great, great push by our line. You look right there at Big Jake Roberts, and, of course, Zeke's got the perimeter right there. And just once again, just a great, great job. Great Zeke's job. starting to come into his own as a as not just a, a, a receiver but as a football player. Absolutely. Zeke has become one of our better blocking rod receivers, and, you know, he's just got a big frame and he's able to lock on to you and he's able to, to kind of spread that base out, and he makes it tough for these guys. He gets them turned around. So mishandle the ball here. Once again, we get great penetration. on. And once again, I'll say this is a very, very good offensive line. But uh, right here, you nice. just see us bounce it off. That's His number Jordan. seven was pretty special. He, he's, a, he's a pretty good little talent. And uh, you see our guys come up there. You'll see it. We string it out right here, force yeah. it out, make it bounce. Jordan and McKinney course, did a good job yeah. playing off that block. Another great job by Jordan. We just couldn't wrap up. I, like I said, we're going to have to do some more wrap up, carry some groceries this week or something to get used to holding arms. Ooh, great yes. pop there by Edder. Guess who? Yeah, yeah, big surprise. <laughs> as you know, you see know. the runner go backwards. Didn't, yeah, didn't see that coming, you know. So, uh, you, know, you see the pop it's right like, there. Hello. A great job by Elijah, textbook. He turns it in, yep. and that's exactly where you expect Edder to be. So come back and – here they throw, and a good job by, by Nathan Bryan of, of being under it, but uh, <laughs> mistimed his jump just a little bit, but great coverage right there. And they come in, and we get a piece of it there. We got a little penetration uh, by a few of our guys. and Good heads-up play right there by Nathan going down and getting on the ball and, and down in the end zone and bringing it out to 20. So we go into the fourth quarter. They'd cut the, you know, 20 to 17, and just once again, a, a great job there of, uh, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, Chase has turned into a great blocker, but he's got great soft hands. He's very athletic, and you'll see it right here. Just a little dump play down the seam. Free safety, we kind of caught him shading something and uh, wound up, like I said, just picking up some key yardage. Good job here just running straight dive and, and uh, you know, Edder just kind of lumbering in there and picking up five, six, straight seven Straight out yards. of the 30s and 40s and 50s. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you're looking for him to fold his helmet up and put it in his back pocket. <laughs> great throw and catch here. Nice. Cross his body. We don't recommend that, but obviously uh, he saw the open receiver and Sigmund's really become a very – Peter Sigmund's become a very, very reliable – uh, very, very loud. great job there. Kelvis coming back. I yeah. didn't see that initially. That was a great job. But like I said, just a good job there. Pete catching that ball, securing it, picking up the first down right there. Coming back right here and, and, and kind of run a very similar pass, except it's more of a, mm. a just he's by himself as a single receiver route. And uh, like I said, goes out, gets open, makes the play. And you know, once again, just a great play right here. Good soft touch, too. Payton just put it right over that number one over the Spurs. Uh, uh, right over his hand. But once again, this, the, we, we get a blitz, blitzed right in, almost mm. like the other one, blitzed right in. That's obviously a tendency that they picked up, and they called the right blitz at the right time uh, and caused the fumble there. So great penetration right there, and old, old uh, DVD, is uh, he, he's blue-collared that night. He worked hard that night, and uh, it's good to see those guys getting some, uh, get, getting some recognition right there. And, you know, once again, we just do a good job right here of, of, of pushing the ball outside. Jordan McKinney. Jordan McKinney again, Ann that's Edder. right. And Edder, that's right. And, you know, that's why our, our defense is designed, you know, get a great you know, play and Edder. just surprise there. <laughs> and Edder making the, the interception there. But once again, you know, our defense played very sound. We're a bend, don't break defense. You know, we, we don't have the great, tremendous athletes that's going to come out there and just completely stop everybody. But these guys tend to tighten the screws and toughen up. When it gets game, when it, when it gets to where it's down there on the goal line, you got football players. That's right, and right then right here is one. just a great run by Edder. I mean, he just takes the ball, and you know, great football presence. He probably could have outran the guy and scored there, but he knows that guy's coming up. He right. feels it, 
and he just goes right then and double arms it and protects the ball. And that's just that's good coaching out of Coach Sparks, good coaching out of Coach Napier, and, and at the end of the day, being very coachable. And that's right. probably the best thing I can say about Edder is he's coachable. Yeah. We're unable to punch it in, but this is a great opportunity for us to come back in and try to kick out a field goal and, uh, once again, allows us to run the score up to 30-17. Uh, here's just a mishandle, and, and they call it an incomplete pass. I think they tend to do that at the end of the games. Uh, but, uh, you know, once again, you'll just see great Good moves pursuit. right here. But there's Warner Braun back there. Yep. We talked about nice. Warner earlier. Just a great sound play, being where he's supposed to be. Just a great, great overall play. You'll see it right here. Look at and the Warner, come, yeah, and he comes actually from nose guard. He's on the other side and, wow. you know, comes in and makes a play. He's going to come back at the end of the game and make a play. That's really amazing. Uh, but once again, just a sound job by Warner. So, uh, great job, and you know, to, for our coaching staff and our players. And I just want to tell Coach Casco, those guys, good luck, and hope they have a good season. All right, Coach, thanks for that summary. And we'll be back right after these messages. There's no place like Outback. With Call Ahead seating, Nelson? just call up, get on the list, and you'll be seated in no time. Outback's Call Ahead seating. When your doctor recommends an MRI, CT scan, or other diagnostic study, you should know that not all imaging centers offer the same level of quality. Hamilton Diagnostic Center's advanced digital imaging technology reduces radiation dosages, limits retakes, and allows same-day turnaround on your imaging results. Each study is read and reviewed by our expert team of specialty radiologists who often collaborate on complex cases. Hamilton Diagnostic Center, your health is our mission. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. Coach, um, let's talk during this segment about this coming Friday night. Mm -hmm. uh, we have come into Harmon Field. We've got uh, Ridgeland Panthers, uh, yep. Coach Mariakis, uh, they made the state championship last That's year. Right. And uh, Mariakis always puts a good team on the field. Uh, what's Absolutely. the scouting report on these guys? Well, it, it starts with Coach Mariakis. He's a, he is a, a lot of people in this area know him. Uh, he, he's a fine, first of all, he's a great man. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second of all, and I think, you know, in regards to his profession, he's a very good coach, offensively and defensively. And, uh, you know, he's going to have his team very well prepared. And that, that's what we know. Those are the mm -hmm. things that are the givens when you, you look out there and see a Ridgeland on the, on the string. I think you said a few givens there, though, that need to also be understood. You're talking about a team that last year played 15 games. That's five right. games longer than, you know, the vast majority of the state. Right. Uh, secondly, uh, even though they're, they're, uh, some of those names are gone, some of those uh, – uh, some of those red-shirted players it seemed like yeah. over these last few yeah. years, you know, Von Bell and yeah. Bridges and these guys, you know, they're not there anymore. There's been some guys that have played a lot of reps that, have, that are now kind of taking over the load, and it's right. their time. And so you look out there, and, and there's quite a few of those guys. Uh, you know, you're going to have six seniors playing, uh, at, least, at least six or seven returning starters on both sides of the ball. Uh, like I said, what's missing are those two, three names Star. that the stars – but I don't see that when I see the film. I, I don't, you know, maybe you don't see a 25 or a 35 yard run, but you do see a 15 to 18 yard run. Right. So to me, it, it, this is a team that's, that's going to be just as prepared, just as dangerous, and just as well coached. Let me ask you this, uh, specific to the defense, what kind of preparation do you, are you having your guys uh, go through to get ready for these guys? Well, I, I think it starts with tackling. I mean, I think that's the number one thing that you've got to do. You've got to be sure that your guys are tackling, 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 tackling. Because as, as, as crazy as this game is and as advanced as it is, it's still, still blocking and tackling. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think, you know, it starts with tackling because these guys will run through tackles. You've got to wrap up. You've got to drive your feet. You've got to take them to the ground. So that, that's where we'll start. Then I think secondly is, you know, that whole wing T offense is based on you being out of position and those linemen having an angle on you. Okay. It's not really based on a, a, a base blocking scheme where they're just going to steamroll you. It's the fact that they're going to block down and kick out 
Are they going to influence trap you and, and kind of give you a look and then hit you in the ear? I mean, you know, so you got to be sure formationally you're sound okay. against what they're, how they're going to line up. And then I think the third thing, though, is just really kind of recognizing their personnel. I think recognizing that, you know, there's just something that this guy does well. Okay. And then there's something that this guy does well. And then you kind of look at those guys on the field and you say, okay, when this guy's in this position, then, you know, what, how, what do we need to expect? And that's where you get into tendencies and trends and stuff like that. So I, that's kind of our progression. We kind of spend the first part of the week working on tackling, working on that kind of stuff, middle part of the week, making sure that our formations line up, make sure everybody knows where to go. Because at the end of the day, it's not what we know, it's what our kids can do. Right. So we've got to make sure that our game plan is simple enough uh, that, that everybody understands it on our team, but at the same time complicated enough that it will be effective against the other team. And then I think the last thing is is just beginning to then work on what's their bread and butter. Because at the end of the day, you can't prepare for everything they do, just like no team can prepare you know, for us. Sure. Uh, you got to find out what you think they're going to be good at and what they're going to do well against you. And I think that's what you kind of work on. That's kind of what our focus would be you know, by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday. All right. Well, Coach, listen, thanks Great. for that. Uh, no problem. And we'll be back in a few minutes with the rest of our show. A restaurant should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable home-style cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest-growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Honesty, integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. No, I'm not at home today. No, now I can have all of my phone calls forwarded and do all kinds of cool things now that I've signed up with OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank my mom and my friend Cassie and the phone guy from OptiLink. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Coach, as we wind things up with this, uh, this segment of uh, Catamount football, um, first of all, Friday night's always the big deal for everybody, oh, yeah. but we got a lot of the football going on. Yeah, we do. Can you kind of yeah, tell us a little bit about what's going on with yeah, the, we do. our football program? We, yeah, we, we, we actually have more than you can even imagine. <laughs> uh, old Harmon Field's getting its work this, uh, this week. Uh, we have a freshman game on Monday uh, at 5.30 um, at, against Southeast at, uh, at Harmon Field. Uh, we also have some rec league games after that, have rec league games again on Tuesday night. We're going to let Harmon breathe on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're going to wind up with the middle school. We'll be playing a coy here. Right. And we're going to have to reschedule. Our, our JV were, was going to be playing on the turf field, but they're finishing up in the last stages of the track uh, resurfacing. Right. And so, therefore, uh, we're going to move our Thursday JV game to Carsville. But it'll be Carsville at 530. And then we'll be back here. Friday night against Ridgeland right. uh, on, uh, on Old Harmon Field at 7.30. Hope everybody comes out and watches the Cats. Okay, uh, talking about Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, need a big crowd. Big crowd, absolutely. Need a lot of red. A lot of red, that's Any, right. Anything you want to say? You know, Rick Rick called out everybody uh, for the, the LSU game. Oh, so, okay. So All right. he called everybody out, and if you watched the game, it was a sea of red. Yep, uh, yep. What are you calling out for our fans for Friday night? Well, you know, I, I just would like to see our fans show up, and, and, you know, our job is going to be to give them a good game and to give them a victory. And our young men, that's what they're working towards. They're not working to come in here and play their best. They're working, we're a result-oriented team right. and we know that at the end of the day it's about wins and losses and we're going to have to get those wins and so this is our first step because now we're into sub-region play right. and if we want to be a region champion and that's what we this that's what they said is their goals this year's team then then this is step one right. and uh, you don't take any of them lightly so uh, you know we know that Ridgeland is going to be a great team we know that we're going to need an, a 12th man 
So we'd like to see all of our fans come out, be, you know, scream loud and bring the shakers and uh, wear the red or, or black or white. Whatever you'll wear, I think the bigger thing is just be there and be loud. Right. I think if you'll, that, that's the number one thing because we know they're going to have a good crowd and they'll have a good showing, I'm sure. Okay. Um, anything else about this coming game, about this game Friday night that you – want to say or well I, I just think it's it's a, it's a special time uh, you know uh, these guys our last home game was a senior night uh, and uh, with this we'll be doing some other recognitions uh, okay uh, we'll be having our Don Parks and Recreation Department recognition as well uh, and those young guys are going to be out there and you know those uh, you know they come out there and they see that crowd there that I can remember I can remember Chick Bowl you yeah. know, when I was a little guy six, seven, eight years ago, I mean, it's hard to believe I can remember that far back, you know. But uh, it's going to be special. And so I just really want to encourage many people to come out as early as they can. Those, uh, those recognitions will happen right at around 7 o'clock. So you need to be here a little bit early. We've got a, we, we got a crowd that comes in about 7.35, <laughs> 40. We always talk about that. You know, it's kind of like, oh, no, there's nobody's coming. Like, yeah. Don't worry. They'll be here They'll by be the end here. of the first yeah. quarter. Yeah. So everybody's finishing dinner and tailgate and all that. So we want everybody to come out early if they can, support these young uh, future catamounts that are coming along. Uh, it's going to be exciting. So look forward to seeing everybody there. Yeah, I would like to give one final shout out to sure. to our to our quarterback club. Absolutely. You know, you talk about you know the fans get there right about time oh, yeah. the game starts. Quarterback clubs there. They're full about, about, about one o'clock yeah, when they they're start. They're getting so, things ready. So yeah, those guys, yeah. they uh, work hard. They do a great job in taking care of, uh, of our team. Man, I and we'll have them. the tailgate series going yeah. on as well. There'll be food That's and right. stuff like that. So we encourage everybody to come out and get here early enough to eat and tailgate here at the tailgate series. All right. Well, folks, listen, we appreciate you joining us uh, this evening for, uh, this, uh, for this episode of the Catamount Football Show. Uh, Friday night at Harmon Field, uh, the Ridgeland Panthers come to town. Uh, this is going to be the first step uh, for the Catamounts uh, for a region championship. So come out and uh, support the Catamounts. And again, thank you for joining us. Go Big Red.